and talk about the advanced features that's on the Samsung Galaxy S8 and also the Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus. And this one right here is the Galaxy S8 Plus. So what you're gonna do is pull down the notifications panel on the very top, click on that settings gear on the very top right hand side, and right there it says advanced features. And so this is a way to make your phone you know, work a little bit easier for you. So you have several different options here, refer to, you know, that is underneath the multi window, you got smart capture. Let's kind of talk about all this. So on the very top, you have one that says accessories. Now yours might be grayed out possibly if you don't have an accessory on there. So this is actually the clear case for the Galaxy S8 Plus. And right here, it has the automatic unlock. So you saw there when I opened up flap of the view here I was able to have it completely unlocked for me you can actually have it on or off then you have the info and the app shortcuts so I had the roaming clock that will be able to be displayed through this case you also have face widgets so with this widgets here it kind of allows you to have different little widgets you know like a music controller it's kind of a quick access to selected you know, widgets, which is basically applications that's on your phone. So you can have the options of music controller. You can even have your today's schedule and the very next alarm if you like those. So right now I use the music controller all the time because I'm always listening to music and then this is a way you'd be able to select it. You can also reorder it. So if you'd want the music controller to be second and the today's schedule to be first, you would also be able to do that by hitting reorder. So let's go back a screen and let's check out what's going on with Smart Stay. So Smart Stay is back and you're able to actually use the front facing camera to make sure that you're actually still looking at the screen to make sure it's illuminated. So if your screen timeout is 30 seconds, but you're reading yourself a book, you're reading, you know, maybe Nook or you're reading something, then this is a way that you'd be able to have your phone stay illuminated as your face is actually still being detected at looking at your screen. Now you wanna make sure that you hold your phone upright and steady. You're also in a well-lit place, but no direct sunlight, because if the direct sunlight is looking you know, at the camera, it's gonna be a little bit harder to pick up your face. Then the front-facing camera um, isn't also being used by another application, so if you're doing Snapchat, obviously, it's probably not gonna work. And then you also have games. So this is where you'd have the game launcher. So I can do that in another video, but basically what it is is I have my game launcher here, which would open up some of the games that I play. And then there's a whole bunch of different settings you can do for all of those different games. Now, let's go down into identi identify unsaved numbers. So this might be different for different countries. So some countries has this, and then some countries don't have this. It's a way that if you don't have a number that is saved in your phone, it's a way you can tell if it is spam or not spam. And then it'll basically be able to pick up who they are and share the name and number. Uh, and also you'd be able to have it rejected. One-handed mode. So right now I have it set up for my uh, my button on the very bottom. So let's say that I'm using my phone and it's a little too large for maybe what I'm doing at that moment in time. So you triple press the very bottom home button here. One, two, three. Now it is set up for the one-handed operation to where I'd be able to either make it larger or smaller. And then to make it back up to the normal screen size, just click outside of that box area. Now you'd also be able to have the settings as a gesture. So if I was to swipe up from the bottom, then it'd be able to go into the one-handed operation for me. But this button down here by triple pressing is actually much easier and faster to do. Finger sensor gestures. That's a little hard to say. <laughs> what you're able to do is you're able to swipe up or swipe down on the fingerprint sensor to open or close the notification panel. So the fingerprint reader is on the very back of the phone and what you're able to do is either swipe up or swipe down and it'll actually bring out the notifications panel on the very top. So if I was to actually turn that on and basically swipe, you can see right there that my notification panel opened up. So if I wanted to read all of my notifications with a little flip of my finger on the fingerprint reader, I am now actually able to see all of those notifications. For the quick launch camera, so on all the other Samsung devices that has this, you're basically able to double press on the home button. So now that there's actually no home button, it's actually on the screen, 
you can actually do it with the power key. So you double press the power key, and then this is where you have your quick launch, and you can just keep it on. And then, as you guys know, look at that, that's me. You'd be able to flip up or down on the screen, actually switch it quickly between the front facing and the rear facing camera. And you also have the option for hard press home button twice. So the very bottom down here is actually kind of a capacitive button that has haptic feedback. So if you were to press a little bit harder, it actually kind of will act as almost a home button to where you'd be able to open it. But the power button is actually much quicker to open it up on this device. With multi-window, this is where you'd be able to press and hold on the recent key to open up the multi-window option. And you also have the pop-up view action. So you can either have this on or off. And the pop-up view action is where if you're inside of an application and you want it to be popped up and bring it brought smaller, you'd be able to swipe down from the very top to make it a smaller screen. But I actually don't really use that one, but I do use the recent button to activate the split screen. So you press and hold on the recent app button, and then now you're actually in multi-window. Smart Capture is another advanced feature, and this is able to show additional options after capturing a screenshot. So once you do a screenshot, you're able to either capture hidden areas of the screen, which allows you to basically scroll more of the screen. You also have draw on the screenshot. You have cropping of the screenshot, and then you can share the screenshot. So you also have the option for a screenshot if you do power and volume down. That is one way you'd be able to do a screenshot. And right there is all the options that this is basically talking about. And you also have another way that you'd be able to do a capture, which is palm swipe to capture. So let's say that you don't have the option to do volume down and power to do a screenshot. If you're just to take your palm and you swipe across the screen, we live our lives through our phone. like so. That right there is allowing you to take a screenshot for you. And let's go on down to direct call. Now direct call is pretty cool. If you're inside of a text message or you're looking at a contact details, all you have to do is actually just lift the phone up to your ear and it'll actually make the phone call to them. So instead of you hitting a button, just raise it up to your ear and it actually makes the phone call for smart alert. This is when your phone is actually down and once you pick it up, it'll vibrate if you have any missed calls or messages. Now this one I always have on on every single one of my devices because the second you pick it up, you know for a fact that there was something that you've missed and you're like, okay, shoot, now I'm gonna definitely check it out. For easy mute, this is really cool. You have the proximity sensor on the very top left hand side. So what you're able to do is if there's an incoming call or if your alarm is going off, just put your hand over the proximity sensor and it actually simply mutes it. Or put your phone down, face down, and it mutes it for you as well. For swipe to call or send text message. So if you're looking at your text messages that's inside of your normal messaging app, or if you're looking at the phone or contacts, all you have to do is either swipe left or swipe right, swipe right, and that's a way you'd be able to call them. So if you were to uh, swipe to the right, it sends them a call. If you swipe to the left, it sends them a text message, which is pretty nice if you're looking at your contact list. Just basically give it a little swipe and you're doing one of those options. Send SOS messages. So if you ever run into a situation where you need to send a fast SOS, what you would do is you would actually three times press on the power key to basically send your location to somebody. So if you want to, you can read all of this, hit on agree. This time I'm gonna hit disagree because I've actually had this on my, uh, my gear watches. Your phone will actually be able to send a picture or also an audio recording. So if you're in a sticky situation, maybe you're a policeman and you're caught up with something, triple press this. It's gonna to go to your main contacts. They know exactly where you are. If you want to, it'll also attach a picture or a recording. So in this way, people know exactly what is going on. And then you have direct share. So when you have any type of option where you hit on the share button, 
This is where you'd be able to see all the options where if you're gonna shoot it, maybe a text message, maybe you wanna upload it to YouTube, uh, like a live broadcast, if you're gonna be doing Wi-Fi Direct or Bluetooth, any of these sharing opportunities comes up with Direct Share. And then the very last one is Video Enhancer. So as of right now, the available apps that I have on my phone that is downloaded that it'll work with is Video Player and YouTube. What it does is it enhances the image quality of your videos to enjoy brighter and more vivid colors. So this right here has been all of the advanced features that you'd be able to have on the Samsung Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus. So I hope this is something that has helped you guys out. Make sure you hit on like and also subscribe. The Galaxy S8 lets you live broadcast in 360, so you can share your most memorable moments in real time. The Galaxy S8 will take you beyond the limits of any phone you've ever known before. Unbox your phone. Samsung Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus.